Insights on Robert T. Kiyosaki's Rich Dads Increase Your Financial IQ. Narrated by Paul Bartlett. Overview. If you think it takes money to make money, you're wrong. What it takes is a high financial IQ. Robert T. Kiyosaki's Rich Dads Increase Your Financial IQ, 2008, defines financial intelligence, explains its five different forms, and dives deep into each. Kiyosaki exposes misconceptions about finance and provides valuable knowledge that can jumpstart your career as a savvy entrepreneur. In the end, it's not stocks, precious metals, property, money, or even hard work that makes you wealthy. It's what you know about these things. It's your financial IQ that really makes you rich. Financial Intelligence Today's financial woes are enormous. The United States has gone from the wealthiest country in the world to the world's most indebted. Many individuals have faith that the government will take care of their financial troubles. However, the government is unable to deal even with its own financial issues. You're on your own. Fortunately, solving your own difficulties will make you wiser and wealthier. Rich or poor, everyone has money concerns. The only way to grow wealthy and enhance your financial intelligence is to actively tackle your money difficulties. Poor and middle-class people often try to act like they do not have money troubles. This mindset doesn't help them improve their financial intelligence. It is the wealthy who are able to deal with financial difficulties. They are well aware that resolving financial issues improves their financial intelligence. For the wealthy, it's not about having a lot of money. It's about having financial intelligence. Rich or poor, we all participate in the money game. The difference is that some people play tougher, understand the rules better, and take advantage of those rules more often. They are dedicated and passionate. The unfortunate truth is that most people play the money game not to win, but to avoid losing. That's the wrong way of seeing things. In fact, most don't even realize they're playing. Assessing Financial IQ Knowing how to solve money woes is referred to as having financial intelligence. You can gauge your financial intelligence by determining your IQ score. To do this, you need to look at five different types of financial intelligence. Developing the five financial IQs may not be easy and may take a long time. Few individuals realize they exist, much less have the desire to develop them. By understanding these financial IQs, you become more qualified than 95% of society to tackle your money difficulties. Financial IQ number one is earning more money. The majority of us possess insufficient financial intelligence to support our financial goals. The more money you earn, the better your financial IQ number one. A person who makes $1 million a year has a demonstrably greater financial IQ number one than a person earning $30,000 a year. Financial IQ number two is protecting your money. The world is out to get your money, and not everyone who takes your money is a criminal. One of the largest financial thieves of our money is taxes. Governments steal our money legally. High-income individuals are more likely to achieve financial integrity because they apply financial IQ number two to their taxes. Financial IQ number three is budgeting your money. To effectively manage your finances, you'll need a high level of financial intelligence. Many individuals make a lot of money, yet fail to keep much, simply because they budget badly. For example, a person who makes and spends $60,000 a year has lesser financial IQ number three than someone who makes $10,000 and can comfortably live on $8,000 and invest $2,000. It takes a great degree of financial intelligence to be able to live comfortably and yet invest regardless of your income. You must actively budget for having a surplus. Financial IQ number four is leveraging your money. The next step in your financial journey is to find a way to put your extra cash to good use. Most individuals store their financial excess in a bank or in mutual funds. You may leverage your money via savings accounts and a well-diversified mutual fund portfolio. 
But that doesn't require a lot of financial intelligence. There are better ways to do it. Profitability is the yardstick by which your financial IQ is judged. Someone who earns interest of 50% on their money has a better financial IQ number 4 than someone who makes 5%. It's a myth that better rates of return on investment require greater amounts of risk. Financial IQ number 5 is developing financial knowledge. You must master the foundations of the principles of financial intelligence before you can learn how to achieve extraordinarily large returns on your money. Learning should never cease in your lifetime. It's hardly surprising that so many people have trouble building up their financial resources since we're urged to trust our money to experts. If you put supposed experts in charge, you won't enhance your financial intelligence and you'll never become your own financial expert. The cash flow quadrant, or ESBI, describes the four types of people that make up the world of money. On its left side are the quadrants of employee and small business self-employed. On its right are big business with 500 or more workers and investors. You need financial intelligence to succeed in the B or I quadrant. Financial intelligence is vital since it gets you paid. After all, it's possible to be a successful physician and still be poor, yet it's impossible to succeed in business and still remain poor. The Key to Making Money in the simplest sense, you earn money by solving issues. You identify what difficulties individuals are having and strive to fix them via your company or service. In order to get affluent, you must accept that troubles will never go away. As soon as you solve one issue, a whole new one will arise. The trick is to comprehend that the process of overcoming challenges makes you affluent. If you can address their difficulties, people will pay for your services. There are trillions of methods to generate more money, since there are trillions of issues to address. The real question is, what issues do you want to address? You'll become wealthy by solving more issues. Many individuals just want to be paid for their idleness and are reluctant to work to resolve issues. They want to be compensated in excess of the value of the issue they are attempting to solve. They have no idea how capitalism works. For capitalists, the goal is to make better products at a lower cost. If you can't provide a better product for less money to more people, you'll be punished by the market. Capitalists are seen as greedy pigs by many others, and it's not always wrong. However, many capitalists do lots of good, like providing health care access, food, transportation, and electricity around the whole world. Safeguarding Your Money Protecting your money from financial scammers is vital. People and organizations all around the globe are just waiting for the opportunity to get their hands on your money. Many predatory individuals and groups possess considerable intelligence and clout. If they are wiser or more powerful than you, they'll grab your money. To counter them, you need a high financial IQ. Farmers must guard their crops from rabbits, birds, and insects. Bunnies and birds are robbers to a farmer, though most people consider them charming and harmless. Similarly, some of the worst financial predators are individuals and institutions that we trust and respect. Taxes are our single highest cost. Tax departments collect your money and give it to government officials who will spend it on whatever they like. Politicians and bureaucrats have a reputation for being spenders of public funds. Bureaucrats spend much time trying to come up with new and creative ways to rob us of our money, since they don't know how to make any themselves. It makes no difference which political party wins elections. If Democrats win, they'll likely tax and spend. If Republicans are in charge, expect them to use borrowed money to fund their initiatives. There will be more debt, more financial difficulties, and more taxes as a consequence. Your hard-earned money may be lawfully stolen in other ways beyond just paying taxes. Banks, brokers, and corporations are all financial predators. Many firms make you poor by selling you things you don't really need. If you want to be wealthy, become a client of companies that are geared to making you wealthier, such as investment newsletters and financial periodicals. 
Budgeting. The reason financial IQ number three is so essential is because budgeting for a surplus is key to getting and staying wealthy. Spending more money than you earn causes a budget deficit. Because it's so much easier to spend money than it is to earn it, a lot of individuals live paycheck to paycheck. When confronted with a catastrophic fiscal imbalance, most individuals prefer to cut down on their expenditures. Increasing your income, however, is a superior choice. Living below your means is not always necessary. The term does not imply that a surplus is obtained only because of a reduction in spending. If you have extra money in your budget, you have three options. Pay down debt, spend more, or invest it. Unfortunately, most people do the first two instead of the third. You should structure your budget so that your assets pay for your liabilities. You don't have to deny yourself luxuries. Just make sure they are covered by assets so that you don't come up short. Don't live below your means. Increase your means and then enjoy your luxuries. Leveraging Your Financial Intelligence Even in a wealthy nation like the United States, millions of well-educated individuals are forced to accept lower wages despite working harder. They're saving less money as it depreciates in value and paying off their debts with credit cards while the value of their homes plummets. Millions of industrious individuals are now under the impression that investing is dangerous. Only a select few are aware that the key to leverage is control, and the control is only possible via financial intelligence. The good news is that the better your financial intelligence, the more money you can produce without requiring money. Getting rich off almost nothing is a reality in this new era of capitalism. Knowledge is the most potent weapon in the arsenal of the information age. An unlimited return on investment indicates an infinite financial IQ. So the next time your bank tells you that saving 5% and investing 10% would give you tremendous returns, tell them that they're wrong. Information makes or breaks you. An asset is not what makes you wealthy. When it comes to making money, knowledge is king and its lack can ruin you. For example, the majority of real estate investors lose money because of poor knowledge and intelligence. Similarly, rather than a shortage of capital, the majority of organizations fail due to a dearth of sound business knowledge and intelligence. The 20-year-old billionaires of the knowledge age become wealthy by using the affordable and plentiful resources of technology, information, and their ideas. Information permits the coordination of resources at a much faster and higher level than ever before. Meanwhile, individuals are dying as a result of misinformation or data that is either out of date or insufficient. There are indigenous peoples whose woods are being destroyed at an alarming rate. There are farmers going bankrupt and automakers cutting off thousands of people. Information is expanding the gap between the wealthy and the rest of society. The good news is that there is an abundance of free information available. Today, it's pretty easy for people, even the extremely poor or the young, to go from nothing to super rich without much money. The World Outlook The integrity of all five financial IQs is essential in order to get wealthy, remain rich, and pass on a fortune for generations. If you don't have any of the financial intelligences, it's like trying to drive a vehicle with no brake pads and water in the gas line when you don't know how to drive. When a person is suffering financially, one or more of these financial intelligences is weak and financial integrity is not sound. Our educational system is where the absence of financial integrity starts. School systems should have included or enhanced financial literacy instruction when pension rules were changed in 1974 to include IRAs and 401ks. The absence of financial knowledge in our schools is sending shockwaves across the financial integrity of the globe. The challenge for the United States has been compounded by the third part of financial intelligence, creating a budget. America changed laws around money when imports started to exceed exports and began amassing billions of dollars in debt instead of resolving the issue. 
Financial IQ number four makes it evident the U.S. government does not leverage money, but debt. The world's wealthiest individuals owe money to the world's poorest citizens. The good news is that if we face our challenges head-on, they'll make us stronger thinkers. A nugget of knowledge is inside every difficulty, a nugget that enables us to improve our abilities regardless of the state of the economy. There's even more good news. Some national governments are starting to introduce financial education into their school systems. The nation with the finest financial education will be the one to usher the globe into a new era of economic success. Train your three brains. People's financial intelligence tends to be stunted when resources are lacking. They're drawn to places and situations where things are made as simple as possible. These are the folks who are abused, overtaxed, overworked, and under-resourced. They may be brilliant, good, and intellectual, but without financial growth, they will most likely stay poor monetarily. Success requires a certain amount of grit on the part of both an individual and an organization. Our brain is made up of three fundamental parts. The left brain, which we use for reading, writing, and logic. Our right brain, which we use for creativity and imagination. And the subconscious brain, our primitive brain, which reacts on instinct, especially under stress. It's our brain's most powerful part. You can build your financial genius if you can teach your left brain to grasp a topic, engage your right brain to come up with creative ideas, keep your subconscious brain enthusiastic rather than scared, and then take action. Along the way, you must be prepared to make errors and learn. Transitional Environments Investing in long-term transitional situations may help you develop your financial IQ by strengthening all three parts of your brain. There are many instances in which you may be in a state of flux. For the majority of students, school serves as a point of transition. Taking lessons is a terrific way to develop left and right brain capabilities. However, it's not excellent for building the subconscious brain, since lessons increase fear instead of diminishing it. Another point of transition is church. As long as it's a church that preaches the love of God instead of the fear of God. When you go to church, you'll be able to improve your subconscious mind since you'll be finding spiritual power there. The military is an excellent setting for developing the brain. Being a pilot, for example, takes all three brains. It also helps you keep your worries under control. There are a lot of great learning opportunities in network marketing because of the training, support, company structure, and goods that are provided, allowing you to concentrate on honing your sales abilities and expanding your business network. Millions of individuals nowadays want to leave their day jobs and start their own businesses. Sadly, most people never make their dreams come true because they lack the necessary financial IQ. Now that you know your basics, you have what it takes to pursue your dreams. Author's Style Robert T. Kiyosaki's style is technical, but still accessible. He employs financial jargon, but explains it using examples from his personal life. This book differs from his previous Rich Dad ones in that it focuses less on his lived experiences and more on giving the user thorough explanations of everything related to financial IQ. Author's Perspective Robert T. Kiyosaki earned his bachelor's degree from New York University and served as a soldier in the Vietnam War. He went on to own multiple companies. A few years after he retired at age 47, his best-selling books on money and wealth were released. This book is part of his Rich Dad series, comparing the approaches to life of a rich dad and a poor dad. It includes a foreword by Donald Trump, who co-wrote why We Want You to Be Rich, 2006, with Kiyosaki. Kiyosaki is also the originator of Cash Flow 101, an instructional board game about money management. We hope you enjoyed the insights on Robert T. Kiyosaki's Rich Dads Increase Your Financial IQ. 
purchase the book to learn more.